it's okay. Nice. And he's like, ah! so Oh, it's the moment. Yeah, that's the moment. <laughs> Sitting alone in a room, writing a song by yourself and just crafting that song and working on the idea and taking that project from start to finish, going from there to the point where you're playing that song in front of hundreds of people and later to the point where those people are singing the words back to you that you wrote alone in a room trying to express whatever idea was coming to mind at the time is an experience that's almost indescribable to be a part of and for me and for us, for this band, it's, we don't want to be on a stage presenting ourselves, presenting our music to people. It's not about presentation for us. It's about having an experience together with a crowd of people and kind of bringing to this light, this joy that we call making music. Oh my, buy you a punch and smell it back, know you bring it to your name. Got talks in the cage now and Spanish fire singing from a big old tree. Oh my, buy you a punch and smell it back, know you bring it to your name. Got talks in the cage now and Spanish fire singing from a big old tree. I gotta get back to buy you a punch for this metal man. Know you bring it to your day. Got dogs in the cage of women. Spanish mouth singing from a big old tree. I gotta get back to buy you a punch for this metal man. Know you bring it to your day. Adam, what is your least favorite part playing in a band? Whoa, that's a good question. That's a good beginning question. Thank you. Uh, Adam, what do you think? Adam's a cool guy, man. <sighs> he's, what can I say? <laughs> he's, 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 yeah, he's a great guitar player. He, uh, great guitar player. He, man, he gets in the zone, like when he's, when he's playing, he's got like a, a so like a Jimi Hendrix solo he's doing, he's just like, <laughs> like Adam um, really has a lot of the same influences that I have and we mesh really well with our understandings of where our songs are going sometimes a lot of the time I bring songs to the table I'll write a song all the way through verse chorus verse chorus guitar solo bridge chorus and that's the song and I bring it to Adam, and Adam will just take it somewhere else that I never saw coming. And when we go, when we go into our kind of longer, when we start doing our improvs and our jams on a lot of our songs, watching Adam and the space that he takes and the space that who will lead the rest of the band into is really cool. And I feel like I really understand where he's going a lot of the time and speaking the same language, having that musical conversation with somebody and really understanding what they're trying to say musically and where they're going is, uh, is really valuable and it's a really valuable, amazing asset to have in the, in the band. So. 
it's just so natural. It's effortless. His playing and uh, and he's a real he's a real like old soul. When there's a crowd there and they're all into it, everything flows and there's participation. There's like the energy is is uh cycling through you know it's it's going to them and it's coming back to us and it's just kind of it, the, the momentum is there already so we don't have to really try to nail it every single second it just happens naturally <laughs> Matt Hepburn on the drums has just more energy than a baby that smokes crack. <laughs> Not that I condone baby smoking crack, I just think that the enthusiasm that Matt brings to the table, um, I just don't know how he does it. Uh, he never stops. What's cool about Matt Hepburn is that he, he comes from First a jazz background in jump, drumming, and then a punk background. I was watching this movie called SLC Punk one day, and in the end of the movie, Matt Lillard's character, he just wants to be a punk his whole life, and he thinks that'll get him through his whole life, just being an anarchist and a punk. And then he, and instead of going to Harvard Law School where he has all these opportunities, and in the end of the movie he realizes that, like, he can't be like he can't be stupid his whole life. He has to actually do something. And I just had this epiphany where I was like, I need to go. I need to go to. I need to go try to be a musician. Like actually try to be a musician, like a real musician. So I came here. I came to Los Angeles. Doing that. On stage, like he he's he's uh, conscious of the fact that I'm filming, and he'll like he'll see me filming. Uh, him in particular and he'll like put on a funny face or he'll do some kind of gesture And Nick is just Nick yeah, probably yeah, I've never seen myself being interviewed here, right here yeah. I'm a, I think he comes from some alternate dimension that is between the Twilight Zone uh, and Middle-earth <laughs> <laughs> like Nick, you know, gets up in the morning and he just is who he is and he shows up at the gig and he's not trying to impress anybody. Uh, we we were all talking about it. The first set I was on the first set. But he does. I mean, his his man, some of the stuff he plays where his head is at sometimes is like on an, in a, in another place. Nick is channeling something from another, from somewhere else, for sure. Uh, it like was over before it started. <sighs> the horns have been like a constantly revolving thing. I love it. I think if you have I think if you have a brass section and they're still then you've then you've really fucked up. Back and Troy and I have been friends um, since like high school, middle school, elementary school even. I think we knew each other when we were kids. Um, we played a lot of jazz together. We played in the bands at school, and. Um, and he's a great trumpet player. He's a and not just a great trumpet player, but he's a he's he's got a real intellect. This is Ben. He's our saxophone player. Ben and I have been friends since second grade. Since second grade. No, first grade, because we knew each other. That's right. If I have to interpret my 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 sayings, then it, it would lose its meaning. Well, Ben brought such a needed element to the to the group in a low end of horns. You know, the saxophone. He brings the low end, and he brings. Um, he loosened up the whole thing. If the sax players, if the horn players aren't moving around, then you're not then you're not playing funky enough. 
So when they are, you know you're doing, you know you're doing a job. So he inspires me to, when I see him dance, I'm like, yes, we're doing it. <laughs> Right about now, I'd like to invite you to Mills Dad and drive through. Fuck it. <laughs> right now, life on the road is all about a 12 ounce burger stuffed with cheddar cheese and bacon, and sweet potato fries on the side, and a brisk iced tea. And music is kind of a part of that, I guess. Right. What about you, Ben? Arnold Palmer. No. The original. Iced tea. Ah. When you get out on the road and you get as tired as we get, you start playing and then you don't think about anything. And we've had some of the best like music moments from that happening. You would, you know? say, would you say that it's both exhausting and really fun at the same time? Uh, it's cool to see places. It's cool to like to be to drive to California for instance and drive through the desert in the middle of the desert and almost run out of gas in the middle of nowhere. Um, and, but have that, ex have that shared experience with everybody where we're all kind of, we feel kind of screwed. Um, I don't know, it's, it's cool. It's, it's like one of those things where the experience might be, sometimes be painful because that's just how it is, like traveling for long periods of time in, like a, in, a, in a cramped van, you know, with a whole bunch of uh, gear. But because we're all doing it together, I think it lends, it lends to, the, to the overall uh, bond of the band. Long day. Yeah, it's been a long day. It's been a real long day. I'm kind of traveling in the car with you guys. <laughs> uh, very smoking. Uh -huh. It's not just the Wes Williams band like you all follow me. It's more like a, a family. Just a really solid group, I would say. Really fast. But that night you were like, you were talking slow and like really. It was really, really It was really, yeah. It was good. Christ. We're about 300, 354 miles away, and uh, we're gonna play our first acoustic show ever as a band. And I'm terrified right now because Matt's Matt's having a conference call with his uh, with his with his work while he's driving, and also arguing with Allison. So there's about four <laughs> things happening all at once, and then we're going about 85 miles an hour, and it's raining in pockets. Pockets. Which yeah. is the worst kind of rain we can drive. Pocket. We're in a heavy van full of dangerous equipment. Uh, and everyone's highly tired How's and highly waste? caffeinated. Right. Which is a terrible combination. This is a recipe for death. Uh, so if we make it to California, God willing, it's gonna be a good show. It's gonna be a good show. What are we doing now? I'm going to check into the hotel. Cool. I just like filming things. It's pretty cool. Yeah.
liked uh, Downtown New Orleans is great. Mm -hmm. This is strange. Interrupting our life. Yeah. Every time. I thought, I thought you wanted to, be, uh, to have like a documentary kind of feel. I do. Yeah. But the process of it I find to be super uncomfortable. You're uh, very intrusive, but I like it. Yeah. Nick Stednitz here, coming to you from <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. Just finished shredding the bass, played a solo, played the same note for three hours. It was good. You know, we'll, we'll tour, we'll go places, and then we'll come home, and there'll be this rally of people who want to come see us, and, and it's, it's very cool. So. Home. This is home. It's always been home for me. Check, check. One, two. Superficial bullshit uh, in this world. 
And I've heard that song since when I died Burn me inside the bushes This is it Love you more and more. So, okay, substance. What are we talking about? Well, today we have done six tracks in about six hours because new studio record that we're doing. Same title. Nobody cares. Um, we're doing it at Milagro Art Center Studio with Dylan Ludwig uh, on the board, doing the engineer work, and. Um, we're just so proud of this record. It's it's unbelievable. We set up and we played the whole thing live. Nobody really cares. But what we're really doing is 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 making music, and that's something that that I think everybody cares about to some extent. Some people really care about it, like myself and some some of our fans really want to hear that every night. They, when they when we play, they want to hear that. At the end of the day, it's like I think if you're not doing something that you really care about and, and really love and something that really makes you happy, then what are you doing? And I think for me, a lot of it is that. A lot of it is it doesn't matter if anybody cares. So many people have like just this. It's like a ball and chain. They're just, there's like a, the life is like a ball and chain. You know, people are like really rude or really mean or whatever you go through different scenarios and at the end of the day it's like nobody cares. We have some really great people that come out, you know, night after night uh, to see us play uh, that make it worth it for me. Good, bad, everything in between. We just keep on, keep on grinding. Because I think this is the kind of band that so far has, has really picked up quickly and ha has gained a good amount of momentum very quickly. And it's and it's my hope that that nobody cares we can capture some of that. Um, All we're trying to do is play music. It's not just about is this good. It's about with each other as band members and we're connecting with audiences that's what we're doing everybody cares and in another sense nobody cares at all we are a group of guys that believe in ourselves and believe in what we're doing and nobody else necessarily gives a shit mm. So, so when that leaves, when that when that part of it leaves, then it's then the cycle happens has to happen between the band members, and uh, that that zaps me. Yeah. But we still we still kill it. You know. <laughs> Everybody gets carried away with their day to day lives and their jobs and their relationships and their bullshit and their Facebook and all this stuff, and that's part of it too. Is nobody cares. Nobody cares, you know, and it's like, I think we spend so much time trying to please other people, and I think the heart of the message for me is please yourself, you know, love what you do and be passionate about what you're doing, and if you're not, you don't need to be doing it. And for us, at the end of the day, if nobody cares, that's fine, because we are in love with what we do.